Well, first and foremost, um, really, really proud of the effort of our program um, to get us in a position where we could play this game. Um, you know, obviously we were down four players, uh, an assistant coach, and we were down several managers. So on this trip, we had, a, I think, two managers only and two that have never traveled. And so we had so many people step up on this trip and I'm obviously really, really proud of that. Regardless of if we would have won or lost, I was gonna talk about that. The doctors, the trainers, everyone that, that, that made this possible. Obviously it's a hell of a win for us. I'm, I'm really proud of our team because we, we showed a lot of fight. We showed a lot of grit. We showed a lot of toughness. Um, and we were resilient. Um, I thought one of the main reasons we won is that we, 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 we dominated the glass, uh, 49 to 33, and we had 20 offensive rebounds. Um, I thought the last 32 minutes of the game, I thought we really played well defensively. You know, they're a team that was leading our league and scoring at 84 points a game. I think exactly it's 83.7, and we held them to 60. You know, we held them to 37% for the game. And so I thought we did a really good job defensively. And then in the second half, we did a much better job of, of, of executing offensively. We had 12 assists and at halftime, it was one assist and 10 turnovers. And, you know, we had 12 assists and uh, six turnovers in the second half. Certainly it helped having Xavier back in there um, and I thought he was terrific. I thought the other guy that was really, really good for us is Terrell Brown. And, you know, he's been such an interesting case, you know, interesting guy this year because he's been a part of some huge wins for us and, and, and played well, but he hadn't played as much, but he's kept a great attitude. He's shown up every day and he's worked his butt off. And I think because of that, you know, he, he, he played so well uh, uh, this evening. I thought Femi was huge. Uh, these to have 14 rebounds and then the tip in that gave us the lead and then the way we executed down the stretch defensively um, on the side out of bounds, getting the turnover. So big, big time win for us. Really proud of our team. Jeff, I know coaches like to, uh, you know, simulate certain situations. Uh, the Northwestern game, you guys were down the whole time. Does winning a game like that kind of set you up to maybe win a game like this today? You know, it's interesting when we got to the under four timeout. Um, and I think it was a five point game right then. And I told our team, I said, what does this remind you of? You know, this is Northwestern all over again, and we're going to win because we've been in that situation before and they haven't where they've had the lead. They've had to come back, but they haven't where they've had the lead like this. And, and you could feel the momentum changing. And we came out of the timeout and we executed on a, on, on a, uh, on a, on a play that, that, that we drew up, we got Terrell a lot. And then, you know, to come down and transition at that moment, Xavier was, was two for 13. And to have the, you know, you know what, to pull that three and to tie the game, um, big time play, big time play, big time play by all of our guys. Jeff, uh, you know, we had to talk with you some uh, previously this season about, you know, I don't, you know, about almost a kind of tendency for some guys, especially on a team with, you know, the, you know, the, the place for, for a freshman, a decent amount of minutes to maybe panic sometimes. And this is a situation here where you're down four scholarship players, you're down 11 in, in the opening minutes and you come back to win. I mean, what is, what does that signal to you about where this team is from a mental, from a mental and, and a sort of maturity standpoint right now? You know, I, th I think we're, I think we've, we've gotten tougher. I, I think we've become tougher. I think you have to be tough. We're three and oh on the road this year. And it's not like, you know, some, some, some teams that aren't good. I mean, it's Northwestern Miami and Syracuse. So to be able to come on the road and to win, you know, there has to be a level of toughness. There's a level of, you know, maturity. We're a little bit older. That certainly helps. Um, and then guys believe, you know, we've tried to establish in our program that we're going to fight. Like that's, you know, when I thought of Pittsburgh basketball before I came here, when they were really good, it was the toughness. It was the fight. It, it, it was that. And so we've tried to 
we've tried to emulate that. We've tried to bring that back and, and not just down 11, correct? We were down 18 in the first half and we just kept talking, like just chip away, chip away. You know, we were in this situation up here last year where we were down, we didn't get off to a great start and we kept chipping away and we had a chance. We gave up an offensive rebound. I know it's kind of ironic that we won it with an offensive rebound uh, 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 this evening. So, but, 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 but I do think it shows a level of toughness that we've grown. We have to continue to do that. I mean, there, there, there are no easy nights in this league, you know, and so, look, we'll see these guys again next week, next Saturday, if everything holds up and we know that they're going to be angry and, and things like that. But my thing is just take care of us, control what we can control and keep fighting. Jeff, along the lines of what you were saying, what's the significance for you that this all started on the defensive end? It's huge. I mean, that's what we've tried to hang our hang our hat on since I've gotten here. And the thing we've really tried to emphasize this year is the rebound. And we've been pretty good there. You know, I, you know, knock on wood, we, we, we've been pretty good. We work at it. Um, and, and I think the guys are starting to understand the importance of it. So those two areas are two areas that we want to be good at. And we feel like I thought one of the things that helped us what in the second half, especially was the defense and the rebounding, because then that allowed us to get out in transition and we didn't have to play against a set zone the whole time. Jeff, given your team's struggle with the zone in the past, I can kind of imagine, I know you're sitting in your office this summer, you know, knowing these you'd have these games against Syracuse as an opportunity to do something different or, or show that you could kind of break that. And then the game happens on 72 hours notice, you get maybe one practice, you're missing four guys that you probably would have expected to have. How did all that kind of impact the way you approached this game from a X's and O's standpoint? And, and how did that play out as the game went on? You know, we, um, you know, it's interesting. We hadn't been together whole, the guys that could go, everyone since last Monday, since the day before due. And again, we got on the bus, we were headed to the airport. We, we took, you know, since we didn't play Tuesday, we took that as our mandatory day off for the week because we thought we were gonna play on Saturday and we were gonna practice on Wednesday. And when we got, when guys started getting there, we had about three or four guys that were coughing, sneezing, runny nose and sore throat. And so we sent those guys home. So on Wednesday, we just had five guys and we were going to get back together and practice on Thursday. And that's when we had positives within the athletic department, a couple of student athletes. And with the contact tracing, that knocked us down. So Thursday, we had three guys. Friday, we had three guys. Saturday, we had, uh, Saturday, we were able to get more, but we had to do them in three different groups. Sunday was our mandatory day off. So Monday was our first day where we had these nine scholarship guys together and then our walk-ons. And so you haven't practiced in a week. I already knew the timing's going to be off. Our wind is going to be off. Normally, when you come back from a day off, the practice isn't that great. Um, I thought they had really good attitudes. We tried to knock the rust off. And then you're preparing for a zone that you've never seen. Um, you know, our players, our new guys, these new guys haven't played against. And so it was difficult. But they had great attitudes. We worked at it. Um, it took us a while to get used to it, uh, but we did a good job against it. But the thing that we talked about with travel that we have to be good at is defensive rebound. If we do those two things, we'll give ourselves a chance. And we did those two things at a high level. Jeff, what do you know about the availability of guys who didn't play tonight on Saturday? Don't know yet. Don't know yet. We uh, have the, the guys that are in contact tracing. Um, if everything continues to go, they will get out. January 9th, which is Saturday, which is the day we're scheduled to play. And I don't know if I would play them without practice. I, I seriously doubt. So they would get out the ninth. Um, so I don't know. How, Jeff, how's Justin doing? And how big is it to have him on the sideline kind of cheering everyone on? I mean, he's getting better. It's a process. He's getting better. He's working at it. He's getting anxious. Um, you know, wanting to do more stuff. You know, we're hoping that he's a quick healer, but we certainly aren't, are not going to put him out there where there's any sort of uh, uh, risk. And we know there's a risk every time you play, but we want him to be out there when he's healthy. Um, but it's great. You know, he was really good with the guys leading up to the game. At halftime, after I spoke to the guys and they were getting ready to come out, he actually grabbed a couple of guys 
you know, grabbed the pen, went to the board. I don't know what he was writing, what he was doing, but he was talking to guys about the zone, about some things defensively. And so uh, that's big when, when, when you have one of your better players doing that. Coach, yeah. earlier in the season after the St. Francis loss, you talked about, you know, getting off the mat, bouncing back from the adversity. What do you think it means for the program and for these players individually to bounce back after all the adversity you mentioned with the positive test, with the contact tracing, with a win like this? Yeah, I mean, everything. I mean, we, we, we hadn't won since December 16th, you know, and, and that was something we talked about. Um, and again, that's life. I mean, I, I've always felt basketball can be used as a metaphor for life. Everything's not going to go right. Everything's not going to go great. Everything's not going to go the way you want it. And can you get off the mat and keep fighting? Can you learn from it? And can you try to be better? Can you not run from it? You know, that's one of the biggest things. A lot of these young people now want to run from stuff if things get hard. And certainly they've been hard the first couple of years for a couple of guys in our program, for Terrell for three years. But I respect Terrell because he hasn't run from it. You know, Xavier and Audis, they haven't run from it. They've run towards it. Um, and so again, we, we, if, if we continue, if that's something that we can learn, these young people can learn, then the basketball will take care of itself. But, you know, for me, the biggest thing is these guys, once they're done playing and they become fathers and husbands and leaders in the community, you got to get off the mat, man. That's, that's life. Jeff, you talked about early season. I'm sorry if you've already said this. My sound's been cutting in and out. But you've talked about all season about responding and not panicking. And this team, you know, you missed a bunch of shots early. You yeah. had some struggles. Xavier got into foul trouble. And, you know, you saw this team find answers. What can you say about avoiding that panic that you sensed, you know, you went up against, you know, St. Francis and other situations this year where you guys have dealt with that? Yeah, you know, we've, we, we've gotten better. We've matured. We, we, we've learned. Um, I thought we actually got some good shots to start. We missed them. And then they hit three straight threes. And all of a sudden it's 11 to nothing. And we've gotten good shots, but we haven't. And a couple of threes they hit were mistakes with our defense, a couple of things we didn't do. But again, they stepped up and made the plays. Um, but again, you know, we kept fighting. I thought we got off to a great start in the second half. And we cut it. We forced them to call a timeout. And all of a sudden they push it back. They go on a run. And it was during that time that we didn't panic again. And so, again, it's, it's, it's about maturity. It's about growing. It's about learning. And we've taken some steps there. Jeff, what can you say about X in it? You know, 1,000 points, but just what he's meant to your team since he's gotten here. He's meant so much. I mean, he's gotten better and better each year. I mean, he's leading our league in assists. Today, to have seven assists and one turnover, um, and, and, and the majority of those were in the second half. Um, you know, the assist, I, I, I just thought, you know, we have to figure out a way to keep him in the game, you know, where he doesn't foul again in this game, they were both off the ball fouls. The first one was the second one was a cylinder call. I mean, you know, we need him in the game, but he's grown, he's matured, he's gotten better. You know, he's learned the position. He's always been competitive. He's always been a fighter, but I think he's learned how to channel that in a much better way. X, how much did this game, uh, Jeff mentioned with about five minutes left, it kind of, he said it mentioned that it felt like the Northwestern game where you guys were losing the whole time, but you guys stuck with it. How did, how did you kind of take parallels from that game and put it into this game? I mean, we know, we know what type of team we are. Uh, we always play hard to the end and when they, they slipped up and they they, didn't, they stopped playing for a second and they, they turned it on, they turned it off and on in the second half. And then we just kept it on, on and going, and we just just kept kept sticking to it to our plan, kept getting stops, and then came out with a win. Xavier, you've had a couple games where you've gotten into some foul trouble early, and it's derailed the game a little bit. How do you keep your? What can you do to keep yourself out of foul trouble like that? Oh no! Next game, I I'm just not gonna touch anybody. That's that's the end of it. <laughs> Xavier, oh, you're up on that. You've been able to come back after, you know, having to ride the bench a little bit early on and have a significant impact down the stretch. What do you think that means, you know, for you to be able to kind of bring that? Back? I mean, it's a good thing, but at the same time, though, I don't want to keep putting my team in that situation with but playing without me because uh, they, they, they need me. They I need just like they need them, just like I need them. Uh, and that, that's it. That's it. Xavier, what did you see on the last, um, the on the right, right before the end of the, the foul shots? What did you see on when Dolajai was trying to inbound the pass there? Oh no, nah, he uh, I seen him trying to throw it off the uh, T's, T's leg. T T was uh, T reacted fast for the first time that I seen, and he he missed he missed his leg, and I and I just saw the ball, and I, I wanted to go get it, and I was trying to dribble it out, but yeah. 
they fouled me anyway and we made free throws and, and game was over. Hey, what's going what's going through your mind there when you're taking a three point shot to tie the game? You know, that had to take a you know a lot of guts to take a shot like that. Uh, just winning uh, and, and just shooting the ball. Uh, I, 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 all I was thinking about is, is just winning, and, and just the next shot I, I take was just going in, and then went in, and, and we just got got another stop, and that was a game. X uh, between uh, between this game, and, you know, and and the win against Northwestern last much. What does that do for you guys? Uh, for you guys mentally, when you're in games and you're trailing, like what is it? You know, I, I guess what sort of hope and optimism and perseverance does it instill in you guys as you approach challenging situations and deal with them? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a good thing that, that we keep doing it. Uh, we always play hard. Uh, it's a good thing to see. We were missing a couple guys today, uh, but a couple guys, but all, all those guys will be back soon. Uh, and we, um, we're just going to keep digging out, keep, keep digging out wings, any, any, anything possible. So. Do you Excellent. feel like you see, uh, sorry? Do you feel like you see less panic in this, you know, in this in this program? Like when you guys get down early or when you're facing a deficit, does it feel like there's more maturity and more composure from this group than there was earlier in the season or last year or even two years back? I mean, the, the, yeah, it's it's less. We're, we're all less panicking uh, as the season goes on, and, and we're down. Uh, last year, I think we were down by two. It was kind of like the same thing, came same situation as today. And, and last year we did get a, a defensive rebound. They got offensive rebound, and, and they, they, they scored it back last year, and they, they won the game off that. This year we boxed out, and, and credit to all the guys for boxing out, out today. They held Gary Gary to I don't know how many rebounds he had and how many points he had, but he didn't, didn't play 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 pretty well for them for them on that side. Their leading scorer, and so that, that was a good thing to see. X, how difficult is it when you're struggling offensively to dig in your heels defensively? And and how much was that a key not only in this game but also in others where you guys have had those comebacks? Uh, I mean, when, all, when the ball is not falling, in, I, I always tell my teammates uh, every time we come back, don't don't let don't let our offense 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 stuff go go translate to defense. Don't let it don't let it create a bad habit on defense. Uh, I told the guys just keep keep playing defense. We're gonna, we're gonna make start making shots. We're gonna keep back in the game. And we did. X, you you, uh, you finished the game with seven assists. You started to really seem to connect with Terrell Brown late there. What was that like feeding him and seeing him capitalize? Got got some big buckets late in there, especially with the uh, one alley oop. Oh, uh, that was big. Uh, that was big. I always know no T T for doing that for the last two years. He played Syracuse, and, and he always plays pretty well when he plays Syracuse. I get back to him. X, your team's uh, offensive struggles against zone defenses have been pretty well documented over the last couple of years. How much was that something that was? you know, on your mind coming into this season and in this game in particular? And do you feel like with 45 points in that second half, there was some kind of breakthrough there? Uh, I mean, we just, we just attacked. We stayed in attack mode, kept shooting, kept shooting our shots. Our team was making a lot of shots. And, and I was happy for him. Deese, Deese made a couple threes. And he got a put back for them to win the game, put, put us up. Uh, uh, Femi, Femi con contributed pretty well, the little mid-range mid -range to, get, to bring us back as well. Everybody did their part in the bench. Everybody was all into it. And I'm, I'm just proud of the outcome. Excellent. Xavier, were you aware of the thousand point milestone coming into tonight? I actually was. Uh, I already knew I was two points away. I wasn't really trying to trying to feed it to it or let that, let that distract me from, from, from winning the game. X, uh, with three road wins early on for the season for you guys, we've seen you guys saying road kill on the live streams. Is that kind of your mantra for the road games, or how are you guys attacking those? Uh, I mean, last, last two years uh, we haven't really won, won that many road games. Uh, this year, with experience, you kind of know what it takes now, and and I, I, I like I like to call it road kill because I mean you go on the road and you get a win, and that, that just kills the other teams' vibe. These talk about what did you see on the last play when you scored on the tip in there? Uh, Look like. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, uh, it was just uh, we playing we playing out the, the east, east half. I mean, coach kept preaching about rebounding and just crashing the board because we crashed the board on them. Uh, so it was just one of those type of plays. Uh, I see my uh, my teammate take a shot, and I was just hoping for it to go in. But at the same time, you never know what circumstances would be. So I just went in for the offense rebound, and it came off. You know, I was right there in a good position to tip it in. Do you, you, you've played in games like this before. I mean, obviously that Northwestern game where you guys were trailing the whole time. 
Uh, Jeff said he mentioned that at the, you know, under four timeout where he said, you know, you guys are going to win. What was your mindset? And, you know, having done that before, did it help tonight? It's the same way, like, like coach was saying, um, it was just the same position. Uh, we was down 20. Uh, we, we kept preaching as good as he cut the lead down to 10. Uh, we did that. We cut it down to 11, actually. Then we kept saying, let's cut it down to five. And we kept, he kept getting stops and we cut it down to five. And we, like when coach said, it was just like the Northwestern game. And it was just the simple fact that the only thing was different about this game and Northwestern game, we just had more guys uh, on the sidelines that could sub in and come in and help as well. But tonight was a little different because of COVID or whatever. So it was just more and more of their grit. You got to find that grit inside of you to come out with the win. And that's what we did today. Uh, you guys are down 18, then down 14. Why didn't you panic? Uh, because we've been in a situation so many times, and and this is the time, like it's the, like Coach Preacher said, like this is time to, to grow up. Uh, and we did that Northwestern, and today was an, another big reason because of the conference. So no sense of panicking. Uh, 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 Dees, what were the past few days like? I mean, th uh, this was a game that – you guys didn't find out about until Sunday. We had talked with Coach Capel earlier, and he, you know, and he was saying there was there was that there was one day during practice where there were only three guys even available. Um, for you as a player who was intimately involved in a lot of this, what were those days like for you guys? It was really, it was really, it was really kind of a crazy like atmosphere because, like like you like you said, uh, it's we're gonna have days like like I mean what Coach said like we're gonna have like games like this like people will counsel and it's just like a game will just pop out of nowhere. Uh, and you gotta be, you gotta be able to adjust to that. And the te our team did that very well. I can say we, we did that very well for the, the last, we had what, two days to prepare for this game. And I think we did a hell of a job. Adi, so you came out in the game and you guys weren't hitting some shots, but you kept in the second half, especially you came out, hit some early, and then you got to work in some of that mid range game, you know, and, and hitting with hitting, on, you know, within the line. What did you guys, what were you guys telling yourselves to kind of, you know, make sure that you could keep to the game plan and break the, their zone the way that you knew you could. Keep, keep attacking, keep shooting. Uh, some, sometimes like we're not falling, I mean, shots not falling. You get in your head and be like, ah, oh, like stop shooting or you like have mid laps and, that's what we kept doing, like kept telling each other, uh, just keep shooting the ball. It's going to open up eventually. And that's what happened uh, going into halftime. We started penetrating the gap and getting the things that start off easy around the basket and open the floor for the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, your first game without Justin uh, against Louisville, you guys got um, beat up on the glass a good bit. What was the difference today in being able to have so much more success rebounding just rebounding, uh, boxing out, uh, like we just had to preach to ourselves, like we gotta make sure we get offensive rebounds, and and mostly mostly we need a defensive stops because uh, Syracuse is very good in transition, and we slow we maintain and slow them down on the transition end, and we came up with the defensive rebounds, and that was the good good thing about it because then we could push the floor when we get stops like that. My yeah. she been to follow up real quickly um, on the rebounding tip. Um, you guys out rebounded them forty nine to thirty three. Did that change because Quincy Garrier was out of the game for majority of the time? Um, I want to say I was I would say like he, he's he's a very good uh, rebounder. Uh, was he averaging eighteen and ten? So like that's that, it would be another factor for him on the guys. But at the same time, but we just had a mindset that we're not letting the guys that come in double figures like that not to get as many rebounds as us. And a quick follow up. Um, you let the, you let them shoot a lot of threes. They they were one shy of their um, program record. Um, was that the strategy to kind of allow them to shoot that much? No, uh, uh, the strategy was really to run them off the line uh, and make them take four shots. And they just first half they they just had a good shooting shooting half, and that's what they do. They make you make you pay for that on the end. Adis, you've been through a lot in your couple of years. What's it mean to watch this team fight, <clears throat> excuse me, fight like it has uh, in these comeback wins? It's, it's amazing because that's, the, that's what Coach uh, Capel to this job for. Uh, he wants guys to come in. His prog program is made, I mean, built to fight. And that's what we're doing. Uh, we're trying to get this program back to how it was Big East days.
Uh, uh, Ardis, how is the identity of this team different from the previous two teams that you've been a part of here at Pitt? The fight, uh, the grit, and the grind of, of of each other. Like they 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 don't they don't. There's nobody into themselves. Everybody wanna everybody wanna do whatever they got they got to do to win. Uh, and this team is it's just all about fight. Actually, the real the real definition of fight. Ardis. Uh... What was it uh, like in the locker room? I know X had known that he only needed two points. You get back in the locker room, he doesn't have them yet. Uh, what were you guys saying to him, and, and what kind of do you feel like sparked that second half for him? Um, we just we just told him just uh, play your game. Uh, you know, like it's that don't worry about that outcome. Uh, you know, and then second half he just came out. He was, he was striking. Uh, he was playing his game more, more confident, uh, taking the shots. And he got what he wanted, and and plus, uh, uh, off top of that, the dub. So that's I, I congratulated him on that, and looking forward for another game. Uh, these these Justin said, said or coach said, Justin was in the locker room uh, at halftime, kind of drawing some stuff up on the whiteboard. Uh, was he talking to you? You know, kind of giving you some tips on how to attack the zone. What did he have to say, and what does it mean to the team? To have a leader like that, even when he's you know not able to help on the court, he's able to help you know during halftime and off the court. Well, it's very it's very big for because people that I mean the, the players is on the sideline that's not uh, not playing, especially the people that I mean like Justin he played what, one year against uh, Syracuse, so he knows the the things that he he sees things that we can't see off the uh, off the court while he's off the court. So he's just like telling the young guys like Will like the certain spots to be at, uh, looking for. To, to get easy buckets and stuff like that. So like, it's, that's a big that's a big help in a, a, a leadership role that he's taking place of. 